imagine a bubble of material beta inside another material alpha. So it could be a droplet of oil inside water or a droplet of water inside oil, or it could be uh, a, an air bubble inside some water. In any case, we know that surface tension is pulling in on the surface of that, of that uh, droplet, and that's going to make the pressure inside bigger by an amount delta P. And so our task here is to figure out how delta P is related to surface tension. We can look at this by using the uh, differential of the Helmholtz function. So we'll write it out, negative PdV minus SDT, and then we have an additional amount of energy caused by surface tension. And we have to be a little bit careful here. We're using A here for area, and over here, this A is for the Helmholtz function. Fortunately, it's the same symbol. So we'll get rid of one of those A's in a minute. Now we know that there's the surface tension pushing in, and the only reason the bubble doesn't shrink is that the pressure inside must be greater than the pressure outside. So really what we're interested in is the uh, difference in pressure between the inside and outside. So we're going to write that as delta P. Now at equilibrium, those two energy terms are going to be equal. Uh, we're going to work at constant temperature, so we don't need this term. So at equilibrium, there's no change in Helmholtz function. And the pressure difference term plus the surface tension term are going to be equal. And so what this means is that the, this term is going to tend to have the bubble increase because that would uh, decrease the, uh, the volume here. And this term is going to tend to make the bubble shrink because that would decrease the amount of surface energy, and so they're going to cancel each other out. So at equilibrium, these two things have to be equal. So let's solve this for delta P. We can see that it's going to be gamma dA divided by dV. So we have to figure out what weight dA and dV are. Well, remember, this is a spherical droplet, so let's go ahead and annotate that this is a sphere. So A is equal to 4 pi r squared. It's true for any sphere. And dA is just the differential of that, so 8 pi r dr. We can then do the same thing with volume. So volume is for a sphere is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So dV is going to be 4 pi r squared dr. So now we've got our dV piece, we've got our dA piece, and we're going to take both of those and plug them in here and here for a new expression on the next slide. So we can just plug in our expressions for dA and dV. You can see that dA is going to be 8 pi r dr. And we can get dv, and we see that dv is going to be 4 pi r squared dr. And we can see that most things are going to cancel here. We can cancel our pi's. We can cancel 4 and 8, and that's going to give us a factor of 2. And we can cancel our dr's and all but one factor of r. So we get a much simpler expression. We can say delta p is equal to 2 gamma over r. And of course, this is for spherical drops. So that's how much greater the pressure is inside the drop than outside. So it's a spherical bubble, so we know right away the pressure difference is 2 gamma over r, so we just need to get, gather all those things. So the if we say that the surface tension for the CO2 soda interface 
is going to be approximately the same as the air water interface. We know that that's at room temperature, that's going to be 72 millinewtons per meter. And the temperature is not given, so we're going to assume room temperature. Otherwise, we'd have to look up the surface tension at, at a, the particular temperature of the problem. All right, we have the radius. Well, actually, we're given the diameter. So the radius is going to be uh, 0.5 millimeters. And we're going to put all these into SI units. And so we can say we've got 0 0.072 newtons per meter for gamma. And we've got R is equal to 5 times 10 negative 4 meters. And let me just plug that in. So delta P is 2 times the surface tension divided by the radius. And that comes out to 288 newton per meter squared, or really it's we typically write that as just Pascals. Okay, so there's a substantial uh, increase in pressure inside the bubble as compared to the outside. However, it's small compared to atmospheric pressure, right? Because for atmospheric pressure, that would be 10 to the fifth Pascal. So it's much less than that. 